Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And uh, as you can see, this one is going to be a bit more festive. Uh, before I jump into it real quick, uh, again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate all the support. And uh, if you like the video when it's over, give it a thumbs up. If not, let me know what I can be doing better down in the comments. So, why am I in the penguin suit? Um, well, first off, um, I do want to make sure that I'm, I'm touching on enough of the sartorial content to still be, you know, worthwhile. But, just came off a of Mardi Gras season and spring and summer is uh, typically wedding season. And so what I wanted to touch on was a few examples of, let's be honest, even if you are somebody that wears formal clothing on a regular basis, this is still a less than regular occurrence. So for most folks where they might be wearing a tuxedo once every five years, since it's unfamiliar territory, there's a lot of opportunity for people to unintentionally look foolish. But the good news is that means that there's a lot of opportunity to just do some easy little things to get it right. So that's what I'm going to talk about today are just some of the basics that uh, you need to be aware of if you're going to be doing something black tie. So jumping into it. Um, most of this is going to apply whether you are renting a tux or whether you're going to purchase one. This is the tux that I got married in because between the ceremony and the subsequent Mardi Gras festivities and the fact that we typically take a cruise or two uh, every year, it made sense for me to actually purchase one so that, that way I've got more lifetime value out of it. But that's besides the point. Um, number one, again, fit. Critical. Even if you are renting a tuxedo, it doesn't mean that, it's, that it has to fit poorly. Now, it's not going to fit as well as if you are buying something that's going to be yours. But again, just make sure that you've got enough taper in the body, that the sleeves are short enough to expose the shirt cuff, things like that. Um, there's plenty of guides online as to how suits should fit. Uh, really the big one, the most important one, is to make sure that it fits in the shoulders. This actually is, um, is a little big for me at this point because I was about 35, 40 pounds heavier when I purchased it. And there's a little bit of puckering in the shoulders. So I could probably afford to get this taken in a little bit more. Fit's always going to be critical. But let's dive into some of the more specifics. The tuxedo shirt. Um, it can either be pleated or it can be flat front. It can either have a turn down collar like a traditional dress shirt or a wing collar but don't try and cheap out and use a regular dress shirt as a tuxedo shirt that's just it's it's lazy now if you're renting they should supply you with one not gonna be a great shirt but it's at least gonna be a tuxedo shirt uh, French cuffs are pretty much essential and ideally you want matching tuxedo studs to go along with your cufflinks um, if you want to be super technical, yes, there are shirts where you don't have to wear studs and uh, mother of pearl buttons are acceptable as well. This is a Turnbull and Asser shirt and uh, it's from a very high-end English shirt maker that Craig Douglas turned me on to. Um, and this can kind of go either way behind the placket. There's mother of pearl buttons as well. But uh, this is kind of the, the traditional look. Um, I prefer the turn down collar as opposed to the wing collar for two reasons. Um, number one is I have round features. So as the night progresses and I untie my tie and I open the collar, this creates kind of a slightly more flattering silhouette than those little stubby wings that make me look like I got pumpkin head. Um, and the other thing is, is that the, the band around the neck, I think, visually separates everything. So again, I like the silhouette that this creates a little bit better. Um, but moving from the collar to the tie, honestly, if it's black tie, it should be a black tie, silk or satin. Um, there are only a couple of exceptions to this. Uh, the first being if you are at a suitably festive occasion, for example, a Mardi Gras ball, what I've got here is purple, green, and gold with Mardi Gras crowns on it. So it's at least thematically appropriate. But if it's a formal event, you're wearing a tuxedo, 
You want to avoid wacky ties, crazy patterns, and um, that kind of dovetails into one of the big mistakes that I see people make. Unless it's black. Matching ties and cummerbunds are a no-go. There's two exceptions to that. Either you are in a wedding party and that is what the couple getting married has uh, requested, or you're going to junior prom. That's it. Anything outside of that, it's just, it's amateurish. Um, and the other amateurish move, and the reason that I don't like these matching combos, is because the ties they come with are typically pre-tied. And um, yeah, if you're an adult, learn to tie a bow tie. It's not that hard. Unless you are physically incapable of doing so, um, there's, there's really no excuse. Because number one, this is just a much more elegant and sophisticated look as the night goes on. If you want to go open collar, you've got this kind of Rat Pack vibe as opposed to, you know, the, the, the angsty teenager whose evening is not going the way that he wanted it to. So avoid matching sets and for the love of God, learn how to tie a bow tie. Even if you're renting and they supply you with a pre-tied setup, if it's black, spend 30 bucks and buy a bow tie. It's not that hard to do. Um, kind of moving on down, suspenders. Um, if you are going to wear suspenders, then they need to be buttoned to the pants. Again, clip-on suspenders are for children. Uh, and this is true whether it's a tuxedo, whether it's a suit, or whether it's just your dress slacks. If you're gonna wear suspenders, take them to a, an alteration shop. Doesn't have to be like a full-blown tailor. You know, your local dry cleaner will probably do it for 10 or 15 bucks. And just have the suspender buttons sewn in to your trousers so that where you can wear a proper set. Uh, the waist covering, if you're not wearing a cummerbund, is gonna be a vest, but it is gonna be a lower cut vest. And again, this is one of those, if you have a choice, so if you're not a wedding party and this stuff isn't getting issued to you, if you're gonna wear a vest, it should be a full vest, meaning like one with a back, not just goes around the neck and fastens behind your waist because that's gonna make you look like a blackjack dealer. Um, if you can only find open-backed vests, opt for the cummerbund. Because, again, otherwise it just looks childish. Um, and that's kind of the top end. Those are the big ones. Um, oh, one more. If it's a tuxedo, if it's, if it's black tie, that means bow tie. Uh, you see a lot of you know celebrities, black carpet stuff, where they're wearing a necktie. If you're gonna do it, that's kind of a style flex. So if you're if you're going to break the rules, everything else needs to be cohesive enough that it's apparent that you're breaking the rules intentionally and not just oh well I couldn't get a bow tie so here's my necktie. Um, and if you're gonna go that route, it needs to be a solid black silk necktie. Period. Hard stop. Um, I'm going to link to another one of my videos where I talk about being well-dressed is, is kind of being well-mannered. And uh, there's a story that I share in that video about a guy who showed up at somebody else's wedding and he was trying to uh, flex a lot more style knowledge than he actually had. And the way he tried to do it made it abundantly apparent, just made him stick out. So if you're trying to fly under the radar, stick with the classics. Uh, so we've got all that covered. The nice thing is the jacket, the pants, pretty, pretty safe, pretty self-explanatory. But again, this is assuming that you're either buying or renting a tuxedo. Do not try and just take a black jacket and a black pair of pants and put them together and then wear a white shirt and a bow tie and try and pass that off as a tuxedo. Because number one, the colors aren't gonna match, the, the fabrics are not gonna be correct, the buttons are not gonna be correct, and it's, it's going to look sloppy. It's going to look out of place. It's going to look amateurish. Um, last thing on the jacket, either peak or shawl lapels are what you want to go with. The notch lapel is pretty much reserved for a suit jacket. It's not formal enough, and a lot of rental companies are going that route, but it looks wrong. So, again, if you are involved in an event that 
is important enough to the guests of honor that they're asking you to wear something like this, take the time, take the attention, and do it. The last one is going to be shoes. Um, the nice thing is, is that, again, if you're renting a tux, you're going to get a pair of shoes with it. If not, you can get away with a highly polished, which this is not, uh, black Oxford. It doesn't have to be patent leather, but if you want to go the patent leather route, you certainly can as well. But again, this is all really simple stuff. Keep the tie and the waist covering black unless it is thematically appropriate. Make sure that you've got the appropriate waist covering. Make sure that you can actually tie your tie. The only other thing is, is the accessories. Um, you know, a relatively inexpensive set of studs and cufflinks is something that you'll get a decent amount of mileage of. Uh, if you are going to keep it uh, on theme, you don't want it to be garish. So everything else is black and silver. Yeah, I've got a Fleur de Lis cufflink here, but it's not, um, it's not like super showy. Watches. This is another one where I see people make a lot of mistakes. If you only own a smartwatch, don't wear it. Just flat out, don't wear it. Um, if all you've got is a G-Shock or some other kind of rugged utility watch, just don't wear one. Old school tradition dictates that if you're going to a formal event like this, you should not be concerned with the time at all, so wearing a watch of any sort is, uh, is considered uh, kind of gauche. But, you know, the reality is, is that watches have become a staple menswear accessory these days, and so having just a simple sports watch, either on a leather strap or a metal bracelet that matches the rest of the metal that you've got on, um, simple. Nothing, like literally this is just hour hand, minute hand, second hand, and a date window. That's it. Um, I don't like big complications and stuff like that, so, you know, dive watches, James Bond is famous for wearing a Rolex in a tuxedo, and, you know, because it's expensive, people think, okay, well, sure, it's expensive, you're dressing nicely, they go together. Eh, kinda. Um, but it's a big, chunky tool watch, so it doesn't jive with the whole elegance that you're trying to go for. Um, that's really kind of a high-level checklist. So make sure you got the right shoes, make sure you've got the right accessories, make sure that you've got the right tie, cummerbund, or vest combo. And um, even if this isn't your thing, put the effort in for the people that you're going to be there with. Because again, it's just kind of a, uh, it's, it's a show of respect. So what do you think on this one? I know it's a little bit more niche. It doesn't really apply to everybody, but I want this to be a high level primer because since this is so infrequent, um, it's something a lot of people get wrong. So anyways, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Um, when was the last time you've been to a black tie function? What were some of the mistakes you've seen people make at these black tie functions? Put it all down in the comments. And aside from that, if uh, you are getting mileage out of the channel directly, the Patreon is alive. We've got some great conversations going on there. I actually just did a style con uh, consultation with my friend John Valentine from Green Ops. And uh, yeah, so aside from that, hope everybody has a great week. Stay dangerous. Stay sharp.